And you may be seated, praise God. Good to see you uh, this evening. Thank God for the music tonight. Thank God for those of you who are here. We're going to uh, get into the lesson tonight. I got a lot of material that I like to try to get in tonight. I'd like to finish tonight if I could on this topic. But why aren't the gifts of the Spirit freely flowing in the Church of America? It causes one to wonder when we consider powerful they consider how powerful they are and the fact that would greatly enhance they would greatly enhance the ministry of the local church and beyond i meditating on that today i've come to uh, believe that one of the reasons why uh, the gifts of the spirit aren't flowing freely in the church of course one of the primary reasons that people don't talk about them a lot but more important than that I think that in order for an individual to flow in God, they have to first have a working knowledge of the gospel. Because, hey, brother, sister, tonight, if you don't accept the fact that you have perfect salvation through Christ and his blood, all of your sins have been placed on Jesus and all of his righteousness has been placed on you. Amen. Amen. But you have so many individuals in the church community who are always trying to overcome something. If they're not trying to overcome one thing, it's another. But may I tell you tonight that if you believe the gospel, you've already overcome. You already have the victory. You're perfectly saved. And, and you're not saved because of you. You aren't saved because you obey God. You're saved because you trust it in his gospel on tonight. And, and remember, you didn't become a sinner by sinning, and you're not going to become holy by living right. No, it is imputed to you. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, gift of God, not of works, that's any man should boast. And you've got a lot of folk in the church community who simply don't believe that, and uh, their lives are raggedy, and and they are barely getting by, and they're up and down and, and roundabout, you see. So it, it, it's, it's most essential that you trust in the redeeming blood of Jesus and that you know that you're no longer a sinner. I don't care if you just committed a sin before you walked into this building tonight. Praise God. You're not a sinner. You are not a sinner. You may be sinning, but you're not a sinner. No more than a person who isn't born again or saint just because they do good things. It, it all depends on, dear brother and sister, who you are identifying with. Do you really believe that Jesus Christ was the son of God? Do you really believe that his blood has redeemed you? Well, then you need to begin to act like it, talk like it. Begin to say you're free from sin. I mean, I, I see people testify, uh, very simply saying, I'm free from sin, praise God. Because they don't believe that they are. I'm free from sin. I'm dead to sin. I have the victory over sin tonight because of Christ and his blood. Not because of Ron Hill's blood. Not, not, not because of my ethnicity or my parenting. And that. No, it's all about Jesus. We have been born from above, and you are in the body of Christ. Now, now, there's, a, there's something that you are responsible for, and that is this, learning how to defend whom God has made you. Learning to defend it. Stop allowing the devil to come to you and tell you you're bored, and you, you're this, and you're that, and he's a liar. You're who God says that you are. Uh-huh. And you need to find out what God said about you and then claim that. Yes. Find out what God's word says about a Christian and claim it. Stop claiming that you're weak. Stop claiming that you're sad. Stop claiming that you're mad. You're not. You're not. 
to, 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 to live any other way than, than, than holy is it, 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 foolishness, you see. Because Christ's blood has satisfied God the Father. And since you've come through that blood, God is satisfied with you. And you need to begin to thank God for that. Now, it's a, a lot of teaching go along with that. I, I hate I open that can up tonight. But, uh, you know, see, a lot of folk don't walk in the spirit, do spiritual things, simply because they, they, they don't believe that living for God is, is the most superior way to live. You see. Living for God, you can't listen, hey, brother, hey, sister, there's no life that comes remotely close to a life that is walking in the very nature of God. Mm -hmm. The very nature of God. What did I say it is? The very nature of God. Amen. Now, I, I let a young white lady, I started not to say white, but I did anyway, because she was white even. I, I led a young white lady to the Lord in Oakland last week, and uh, I pushed her by using the word of knowledge. I told her something about herself that I should not have known normally. This gained her attention, and she was open to receive Christ as Savior. Afterwards, she had this beam in her eyes and a broad smile on her face. She grabbed me right there in public and gave me a big old hug uh, before everybody, and, and stated, she stated out loud, I needed that, she said. Well, bless God, she just got born again, you see. But, but the thing I want you to see tonight is that the gift operated, you see. I began to tell her something about herself that I should not have known. And it captured her attention, and then she was ready to hear the gospel after that. Uh, heaven rejoiced, and I was blessed. The gifts of the Spirit are given to enhance the ministry of the church. People can get instructions and directions for their lives, which, is, which, which in some cases will direct them away from trouble, as in the case when Syria warred against, uh, against Israel's kings. Put on the screen for a minute tonight, 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 18, we're going to hurry and read through this, but these verses are necessary to refresh your mind as to what God does. He's a supernatural God, but there's very little supernatural power being demonstrated in the average church today because people aren't open to it. You have to be open to the supernatural because that's who you are. Say amen to that. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Oh, my goodness, wait a minute, that's the wrong place. 2 Kings 6 and 8, 6 and 8, did I say 18? Yeah. Well, he should have heard 8. <laughs> well, if he's in the spirit, if he's in the spirit. <laughs> now, you're doing good, son, I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such a, such a place shall be my camp, verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now, how did Elisha know that? How did he know where they were going to be? Because the Spirit of the Lord revealed it to him. Verse number 10. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there not once nor twice. In other words, on several occasions, the king of Israel and God's people were spared by a word from the man of God. Verse 11. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled for this thing, and he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? In other words, they know everything I'm planning. They know what I'm doing. Who is for him? Verse 12. And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth 
the king of Israel, the words that thou speaketh in thy bedchamber. You can't hide from God. And when God wants his people to know something, bless God, he'll tell them. And these are the kinds of things that should be going on in the church today. Some prophet from another should be able to get up and tell the governor what he's planning in private. Expose that guy. Now, don't tell me God can't. He can do it, but he's got to have somebody to do it through. Amen? Uh, Jesus also operated in the gifts of the Spirit. Uh, he was baptized in the Spirit, and he ministered in the Spirit. Jesus, now note this, and I've said this to you plenty of times before. But it bears repeating. Jesus the Christ, the anointed one, disrobed himself of his majesty, majesty in when he came from heaven to the earth. He came to the earth as a God man. But he had to depend on the third person of the Trinity to do his ministry. He couldn't do it as God. He had to depend on the Spirit of God. Therefore, remember when John the Baptist saw the Spirit uh, descending on Jesus like a dove and set upon him? Jesus got baptized in the Holy Ghost. Jesus was Spirit-filled. And, and he ministered through the Spirit of God being a forerunner to reveal to us that we too can and must minister through the Holy Spirit. Any ministry that's not done through the Holy Spirit is fleshly. It's carnal in nature. I don't care how the man yells. He can yell. He can spit and do whatever he wants to do. But that doesn't mean he's anointed. And, and, and his words will have no lasting impact on anybody's life that's not spoken in the power of the Holy Spirit. Say amen to that. St. Matthew's chapter 12, verse 24 and 25. Jesus ministered in the spirit. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, this fellow doeth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. Now, these Pharisees were bad-mouthing Jesus because he was casting out demons. By the way, if you start casting out demons, you can expect the devil and his people to come after you. If you start getting people healed in the body, if you start getting people saved and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can anticipate the, 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 the backlash of the devil. He hates it when God's people are moving the Holy Ghost. He tries to discourage you, dissuade you to stop doing it. But let me encourage you to go for it. God bless you for it. Verse 25. And Jesus knew their thoughts. Now, how do you think he knew their thoughts? By the Spirit of God. He knew their thoughts by the Spirit of God. And Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Now, Jesus was able to give that word because, again, he knew their thoughts. One, one other example, St. Matthew chapter 22, verse number 15. St. Matthew chapter 22, verse number 15. Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. In other words, we're going to trap him in his talk. Verse 16. And they sent out unto him their disciples with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true. Now, now you got to watch it when people start praising you, okay? Everybody who's making complimentary statements about, to, to you are not always for you. Sometimes they're putting butter on you to, for the cook, cookout. <laughs> they will have a dinner and you're going to be the main course. So just, you know, if people say something good about you, praise the Lord, brother. Praise the Lord, sister. Don't get caught up in it. Because one day they were praising Jesus, and the next day they were saying, crucify. 
So don't be that kind of person that always has to have somebody say something good about you. Ooh, I like your hair. Ooh, I like your hair. No, you better like your hair for yourself. <laughs> wear what you want to wear for yourself. As long as you think you look good, anybody else don't think you look good, oh, well. Right. You're, not, you're not trying to be a model for everybody. Well, that's another, another teaching. All right. He says, now, we know that thou art, a, uh, that thou art true. And a teacher and teaches the way of God in truth. Oh, you, you the real deal, Jesus. Neither cares thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. In other words, Jesus, you're wonderful. Verse 17. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? I don't want to talk about what now? Money. Verse 18. But Jesus perceived their wickedness. What did Jesus do? How did you think he did that? Through the Spirit. When you are communicating, especially with people you don't know well, while they are talking, you should be praying. Learn, learn that habit. Learn the habit when somebody is talking to you that you inside yourself pray. Now, God, is this the truth what she's saying and what he's saying? God, how should I respond to this? You, you can listen and pray in the spirit at the same time. Yes. But Jesus perceived that wickedness and said, why tempt ye me, ye hypocrites? So he knew that they were hypocrites. They were saying stuff that they didn't mean, so that made them a what? A hypocrite. Verse 19. Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. Verse 20. And he said unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? 21. And they said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, Render Therefore, unto Caesar, the things which are Caesar's, and unto God, the things that are God's, and he shut their mouths. Why? Because he was in tune with the Spirit of God. I, I, I just pray tonight that you Christians who are present, and those of you who are viewing by whatever platform you're on tonight, I pray that we would have a heightened appreciation of the Spirit of God. I, I pray that you will begin to appreciate the fact that you have access to the third person of the Trinity and he's here to empower you, lead you, and guide you and to minister through you. He, God never intended for you to do this on your own and for those of you who are struggling on your own, you're foolish. You're foolish because you're trying to do something. You, you're trying to do a supernatural thing through a natural body, and it will never be done. No matter how intelligent you are, no, 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 matter, no, no matter how dedicated you are, you can never be pleasing to God through your own human effort. The devil will make a fool out of you every time. Say amen. All right, now. The word of knowledge operated in the heart of Peter as well. And we're not going to turn to it, but remind you, remember when Peter was on the housetop and Peter uh, was hungry and fell into a trance and the Holy Ghost gave him a vision and a word and said, said three men are down there uh, to, to come for you. Don't ask any question. Go down there and go with them. A direct word from the Lord was for Peter. That word of knowledge operate. Holy Ghost knew those men were coming. Holy Ghost knew what he wanted Peter to do. Just like the Holy Ghost know what he wants you to do. But sometimes we're so hard-headed and so headstrong until we want, we want to do what we want to do because we think that's, that's gl glamorous. But we need to make sure that we're moving in the Spirit of God so that our lives can be productive. Amen? Acts chapter 13, verse number 2. Acts chapter 13, 
verse number two. The Bible says, as they ministered to the Lord, and how, how did they minister? They fasted. How did they minister? How did they minister? They fasted. They fasted. As they were worshiping God, ministering to the Lord meant that they worshiped God and they fasted. When you worship God and fast, you minister to God. They ministered to the Lord, and then the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Had, had the Holy Ghost not separated them, they would have stayed together. But they separated, why? Because of the leadership of the Spirit of God. So we got to have the Spirit of God to lead us, and we need these gifts to operate in us to give us the spiritual capacity to minister. St. John 16, 13. St. John chapter 16, verse 13. And the Bible says, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. It is important to be saved and sanctified and baptized in the Holy Ghost and, and, and to have your heart in tune to, begin, to be able to distinguish the voice of the Holy Ghost. Sometimes your life is counting on it. Don't minimize this to as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Thank God. And I, and I don't say this boast and brag, but I know the voice of God. And I've done many things at his direction, like the other Friday night, going to a workers' meeting, and God telling me to preach on healing instead of preaching on works. And, and I told my wife, she said, I don't know, Ron, but I said, that's a workers' meeting. And indicating that's a workers' meeting. And I thought, well, yeah, maybe I'll teach something else, you see. But the Holy Ghost brought it back again. I said, so be it. And people got healed. Matter of fact, Bishop told me today a woman was at home watching the services at home. And through the screen, she got healed. Because I was in the will of God. You see, when you are in the will of God, you can expect the validation that comes from the Holy Ghost. When you're not in the will of God, you are on your own. And Lord knows that the last thing you want to do is to have a confrontation with demon power without the supernatural assistance of the Holy Ghost. Do you not know that, that your life would be miserable without the blood of Jesus and the Holy Ghost? And, and, of course, the word of God. We saw a lot of sad Christians. They just don't want to do it the Bible way. This book is here to give you instructions for your life and to tell you what you can expect God to do. And, and it would behoove us to get into the word, to find out what he wants and give it to him and watch him work in your life. And you ain't got to go around begging people to like you, begging people to give you a chance. Or, you know, none of that. God will become your PR person. He'll give you favor where you need favor. He opened doors for you. You don't have to worry about them. They block him. Who's going to block you? Who's going to block you? Put on the screen for me. Um, Hebrews. Um, well, did I lose my verse? Hold on just a minute. Uh, Hebrews 13 and 6. Hebrews 13 and 6. I'm only about to read that. Read. So Who's your helper? The Lord. And how many know that if God's helping you, you don't need to be afraid? Amen. If God is helping you, the only thing you need to do is obey him. Somebody in here is getting ready to get blessed out of your, out of your mind. God's getting ready to work some supernatural things in somebody's life. 
because somebody's going to hear this and somebody's going to apply this to their lives and their lives are going to take on a supernatural flavor. Glory to God, brother. Thank you, Lord. Now, briefly, we're going to deal with the, the, the gift of faith for a moment. Now, the gift of faith, the, the good thing about the gift of faith is that God, every man receives a measure of faith. If, if we're not going to turn there, but if you turn to the, to the book of Romans, chapter 12, the latter part of verse number three, you'll note that the Bible says that God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. So you have the measure of faith. So it's encumbered upon you to develop your faith. So how does one develop their faith? You develop your faith by feeding on the word of God and obeying the, the logos, the written word, the logos. You obey the logos, and at some point a rhema will flood your heart. But what is a rhema? A word spoken in the spirit. And when that word is spoken to you, dear hearts, then you still have work to do. You have to obey it. Faith and obedience are synonymous. These folks who are talking about how much faith they have, if they aren't obeying God, and if they don't have anything to show that they are walking with God, they're just talking. They're talking faith, but they're not walking in faith. You, you, your faith is strengthened as you feed on the logos. Memorize and meditate in the logos. Apply the logos in your dealings with life's issues. And at some point, God's going to say, okay, then I'm going to test you. He'll give you a, a rhema word to, to observe whether or not you will apply it. And if you apply it, then he'll just keep giving you words and giving you words. And next thing you know, somebody's going to call you anointed. Because the anointing comes through obedience. It doesn't come because you yell in the spirit. The anointing comes with, with, with a person who is feeding on the word of God, obeying the word of God. And when a rhema comes, they jump right in. Because faith is not, faith is dead until you have works to, works to uh, confirm it. Say amen to that. Because when you have faith in God, all things are possible. Amen. St. Mark 9.23. St. Mark 9.23. Thank you, God. I want everybody to read. Read. How many things? So what have you faced in tonight? Faith in God's word can give you the victory over it. Hallelujah. You get that word in you and you stand in that word and you, you, you confess that word and you, you walk out that word. Bless God, the devils and demons have to back off of you. Amen. The gift of faith is the divine ability to remove mountains of difficulty in pursuing the will of God. This is supernatural faith. God allows the gift to operate when there is something he desires to get done. Uh, many years ago, there was a man by the name of George Mueller. I made a mention him last time. But he was a fantastic man of faith. He, he raised and housed 10,000 orphans, uh, kids in his, in, his, in his facility, and fed them, and he never let anybody know what his financial needs were. He didn't send out support letters or nothing. He just believed God. One day, this is a true story, one day, all the food was going out of the cupboard. There was no food in, in the place, and it was time to eat, and the kids were hungry. So he told all the kids, come around the table, and they set the table, and he had the kids sit around the table, and he began to pray. Now, unknown to him, there was a uh, organization supposed to have a big dinner that very day, but something happened where they had to cancel the dinner. And somebody said, well, what are we going to do with all this food? Somebody said, well, what about the orphanage? And they said, that's a good idea. So simultaneously, timed perfectly, uh, Mueller had prayed and blessed the food. And once he blessed the food, there was a right knock on the door. And they brought the food in and put it on the table, and they ate. 
don't you, don't you try to tell me that that wasn't God. God, God can do anything. All things are possible to them that believe. And the sad people in the church, you know why they're sad? They don't believe. What are you sad about? Do, do you not know that when trouble comes on your life, it is an opportunity for you to use your faith? Because something's going to come on you that's bigger than you. And it's coming to intimidate you. It's coming to tell you that you can't get out of it. But by faith, all things are what? Possible to them that, that believe. Amen to God. Praise God. Now, um, there's a, also there's a, gift of, um, there's a gift of healing. We all may not have the gift of healing, but we can all pray for the sick. Everybody, everybody. Matter of fact, you, you should have a bottle of oil on your person. And when somebody tells you that they're sick, you should say, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm a person of faith, and uh, would it be okay if I pray for your body? And you don't know, somebody may get healed. How would you know except you lay hands? You won't know except you lay hands and to see what God will do. The doctors, they practice on you, and I practice on you. Y'all come up here, I'm practicing. So I'm going to practice my faith to see if this is going to work tonight. Shandada Botlo. And sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. But I just got to make sure it's not my fault. Amen to God. There's a spiritual gift called the workings of miracles. What is a miracle? It is the work of the supernatural power of God. It is a wonderful and surprising event that is done by God. Hallelujah to God. Miracles. I mean, when something happens, you think, my God, we didn't expect this. But God worked miracles. And, and we need to see more miracles come into the lives of people. How many of you would like to receive a miracle? Well, raise your hand and say, I'd like to receive a miracle. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, now Paul, he worked a miracle. They remember, Paul was preaching. And he was preaching all night. He preached longer than I did. That's what takes him doing right there, but he did. He preached, and he was preaching all night long. And there was a young man in a tree uh, listening to Paul's message. He fell out of the tree and broke his neck and died. And then Paul went down, prayed for the guy, raised him from the dead, and kept on preaching. Say amen to that. So the power of miracles surpasses all known human or natural power. And therefore, it is supernatural. Acts 5 and 12. Acts 5 and 12. It is supernatural. Acts the fifth chapter, verse number 12. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Father, we pray and believe in the name of Jesus that you're going to stretch out your hand in this ministry and we're going to see more healings and the casting out of demons and people getting baptized in the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues, and people receiving miracle money by faith. Kind of getting about to agree with that. By faith, we're going to claim it by faith. Verse number 13. And of the rest doeth no man join himself to them, but the people magnified them. And, uh, and we need God to still work in the church that folks stop fighting church folks and start magnifying church folks. Verse number 14. And believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both for men and women. Why were they added to the church? Because they observed miracles, signs, and wonders. And it caused them to join themselves in the church. Guarantee you one thing, dear brother. If a lot of people come into a local church setting and they get healed in the body and they get the devil cast out of them, 
they're going to go tell somebody and somebody's going to come as a result. We got to get beyond just preaching good. And we got to get beyond talking about what God used to do and about what God is going to do and show what God is going to do right now. When I was up in Oakland last Friday night, I said, God, I, I made a statement when I got up. Here's what I said, these words. Somebody's going to get healed tonight. And the devil said, oh, how do you know? I said, because I said so. Amen. So, so somebody had to get healed because I said it. And, and the reason I was bold to say it is because the Holy Ghost had directed me to teach on healing. And he wouldn't do that and not back that. All kind of healings took place. And so men of God and women of God began to believe God for the gifts to operate in you. So you just become more than just a teller, but, but, but somebody that God can use to manifest the glory of God. Verse 15. Insomuch that they brought forth the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that at the least the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow some of them. That old boy was so anointed that he didn't even need them to, to touch him. Just pass by and they got healed uh, by the power of God. Verse 16. There came also a multitude out of the cities round about unto Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them which were vexed with unclean spirits, that homosexual demon they had on them. And they were healed every one. Good God Almighty, brother. Look at the power of God operating. Verse 17. Then the high priest rose up. Now they got mad now. They rose up and all they that were with them, which is the sect of the Sadducees, and were filled with indignation. You think they would have been happy that people are getting healed. You think they'd be happy that the devil's being cast out of people, but no. It enraged them. And you need to know that everybody that go to church don't want to see the power of God manifest. No, they want to, they want to, be, they want to be magnified, not have God to be magnified. Verse, verse number 7, 18. And laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. They went to jail because of allowing God to use them. By the way, when you allow God to use you, don't expect everybody to celebrate you. Sometimes folk will be mad with you. How dare you bring the Holy Ghost in here? Amen. Verse 19. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them forth and said, verse 20, go stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. Now that's a miracle right there. They were locked down in jail, locked down in jail, and an angel did a jail break. Lord, send some miracles in your church today. We need some miracles. We need some signs. We need some wonders in God's church. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Verse 21. And when they heard that, they entered into the temple early in the morning and told. But the high priest came and they that were with him and called the council together. And all the senate of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them bought. They don't know what had happened. They just, they think they're going to bring them. Verse 22, watch, watch. But when the officers came and found them not in the prison, they returned and told, verse 23, saying, the prison truly found we shut with all safety and the keepers standing without before the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now, how did God bring these men out of that jail with people standing out in front of the door, the doors locked, but yet somehow God changed their body's material he did something. Who know how he did it? But he did it. 
And we don't need to try to question how he did it, but thank God he did it. And the same God today is able to do supernatural things in and around his church. All he needs is for somebody to say, I believe God. Amen. I believe God. I believe God. I trust in God. Praise God. Now, the gift of prophecy, it is to receive a direct revelation from God to be able to interpret the divine will of God, to have God to reveal things to you. And I want all of you to know in here today, if you're born again, God talks to you. Now, God is not a big talker. Well, I haven't found him to be a big talker. I met people say God, and God told me, and they just talk that God, every day God is talking to them. Now. I said, I just said, okay, all right. Especially when they get nothing done. They don't have any evidence to confirm that God is talking to them, but he's always telling them something. Well, amen to God, amen, praise God. Acts chapter 11, verse 27. Acts chapter 11, verse number 27. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch, verse 28. And there stood up one of them named Agapus and signified by the Spirit that there should be a great drought throughout all the world which came to pass in the days of Claudius Caesar. So this man, Agabus, got anointed to bring forth the prophecy and that prophecy came to pass. And God want to do that for somebody in here today. For you to say, thus saith the Lord, and then have the Lord to confirm it. Oh, Pastor, yeah, what if it doesn't happen? Well, what if it does? And what if it doesn't happen? I'd rather have somebody to try to hear from God and, and not have, than have somebody who God is talking to, but they are afraid. No, I, I, I can't say nothing to God. No, no, no. Now give me some bold people. But, you, but see, if you want God to talk to you, you talk to God. If you want God to possess you, make yourself available. And he'll do just that. Amen. Revelation, I mean, uh, prophecies come forth. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. Luke chapter 1, verse 67. And, and his father, Zacharias, was filled with the Holy Ghost and prophesied. Filled with the Holy Ghost on prophesying, saying, 30... Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. He's prophesying. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been sent, which has been since the world began. Always been prophets, always. Verse 71. That we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of all that hate us. Going to be saved. That's a prophecy. Verse 72. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant. So in the interest of time. You read on down to verse 80. And you find he's making a prophecy. And the prophecy came to pass. Prophecy comes to pass. When you're prophesying. Under the direction and power. Of the Holy Ghost. Now, the gift of discerning of spirits gives the power to detect whether a person is speaking by the Holy Spirit or by the spirit of the devil. It, it tells you whether or, not, whether or not somebody is lying or telling the truth. You need that discerning spirit. Everybody should, matter of fact, raise your right hand, everybody. Say, Father, give me the gift of of discerning spirits. Especially your parents. You need to be able to discern when your kids are lying. You ought to be able to see in their eyes. Boy, you know you're lying. And mothers have that gift, thank God. Say, boy, you're lying. You know you're lying. No, no, no. You're lying, girl. Stop. Amen. Uh, and to another, uh, 
interpretation unto another diverse kinds of tongues. Verse number 10, uh, excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles, we talked about miracles and prophecy and discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. Uh, Sometimes you go to play and everybody's speaking in the same tongue. You'd be saying, wow, man. But God gives diverse kinds of tongues. And by the way, I've laid hands on persons and they get baptized in the Holy Ghost and start speaking. And because that tongue doesn't sound like other people's tongue, they think, is this God? Yes. Your tongue doesn't have to sound like everybody else's tongue. Diverse kinds of tongues. And some people, listen, some people get baptized in the Holy Ghost. They hear tongues inside, but they'll say, is this God? Or they'll say something to the effect, I don't want to miss God. Or I don't want the devil to, no, don't, don't worry about that. The same faith that's required to receive Christ as Savior is the same faith that is required to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. You ask him for it, you believe for it, and you thank him for it, and at some point, the manifestation is going to come. If you're in here tonight and you've never spoken in tongues, begin to believe God to baptize you in the Holy Ghost and thank him that someday it's going to manifest by you praying in tongues. And by the way, praying in tongues is very, very important because when you pray in tongues, you edify yourself. You build yourself up. And you need to know that there's a lot of controversy in the church uh, about tongues. There's whole denominations fight tongues. And the denomination I was brought up in, the Baptist church, as a, as a kid, they fought tongues. Nobody spoke in tongues. And when somebody would get happy, for some reason, they would get stiff. And they would fan them and drag them out. And I was a little boy, and I would say, well, why did they drag out Miss Smith out of the church? They drag her right out there, you see. They, they do good. Don't be getting happy. If you get happy, you're getting out of there. Can't be getting happy around here. Ain't having none of the happy stuff around here. But I live Cataconia across the street from a church of God in Christ. And they were dun, 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 jumping, bucking, rolling around. And they'd have more people outside the church than in the church <laughs> looking in the window. And then me and my brother, Russell, we'd get on our front porch and mock them. Dun, dun, they're dancing. <laughs> and one day I was dancing, Holy Ghost said, remember you marked them, now you're one of them. Amen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know tongues of will. And Bishop S.M. Cross laid hands on me. And I was in my apartment. I was a single man in my apartment. I was praying. I was praying, calling on God. And I saw a hand from this from this uh, push of an arm and a hand with a, with, with a canister, and it poured oil on me. And it was so dynamic. And then I, I rubbed the back of my neck to seek it out. Seek it out. I said, what was poured on me? I saw it in the spirit, a hand on top of my head pouring this oil on me. And the next day when I got in prayer, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. And I started speaking in tongues. And at first, I tried to stop it. I said, what's going on with me here? But it got so good. It got so good. And 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half later, I was still praying in tongues. And my life has not been the same since that day. Now, I was already saved. But there's a difference in being saved and baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost, then God can direct you. He can lead you. I mean, it's, it's, it's a game changer. He'll talk to you. He'll reveal to you what you ought to do. But make sure, make sure that you uh, expose your mind, your heart, to the Word of God continuously so that when a voice speaks to you, you can immediately determine whether it's friend or foe. Because a lot of people run around and saying God told them to do something, 
but it's against the word of God. I never shall forget, that was a mother who was a member of this church. She's been dead many years ago. Her name was Mother Susie B. Singleton. Probably none of y'all remember that name. Anybody remember the name Susie Singleton? Singleton? Oh, oh, who was that back then? Sherita, you remember her? <laughs> she, she, was, she was a piece of work. And she tells a story of, um, of a, a preacher by the name of, of, of George uh, MacDonald. And said this lady was at the church and, and, uh, and she spoke in tongues and went to George MacDonald and said, the Holy Ghost said, uh, you're my husband. And Mother Singer said, well, did the Holy Ghost also tell you uh, he's married with three kids? <laughs> so there are tongues and interpretation of tongues. Um, ask God to give you the gift of interpreting. Sometimes I can interpret, sometimes I don't. But their interpretation of tongues are legitimate. And if you and I, if we plan to reach the scale, the, reach the plateau that God has for us, we must be opened to the power of the Holy Ghost. He is so sweet. He is so gentle. He is so kind. He's not going to force himself on you. But he is always present, wanting to baptize you, wanting to speak to you, want to warn you about something, want to give you directions for your life. Matter of fact, raise your hands and close your eyes. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus tonight that the Holy Ghost would take over this ministry in the name of Jesus. Fill this people with the glory and power of the Holy Ghost. Fill this man, this woman with the baptism of the Holy Ghost with evidence of power and speak in the tongues. I want everybody to say, God, fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Say it again, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, fill me with the power of the Holy Ghost. Once again, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus, fill me with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Now begin to thank him for it. Clap your hands and thank him for it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Be filled with the Spirit. Woman, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Man, be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Give God praise out of your lips right now. Begin to say praise the Lord. Begin to say praise the Lord. I receive the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. By faith, by faith, God, you're going to baptize people with the Holy Ghost. By faith, you're going to release the gifts of the Holy Ghost. By faith, you're going to manifest the fruit of the Spirit in the lives of your people. By faith, you're going to manifest the gifts and the anointing and the power of the Holy Ghost. Your sons and your daughters will know your voice. They will obey your voice in the name of Jesus. You're going to fill them, lead them, guide them, empower them supernaturally 
They're going to get full of the word and full of the Holy Ghost. And they're going to move in the gifts and the power of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that, clap your hands and praise God for it. Ah, And at home, the same is for you. And I know you at home. I pray that you too be filled with the Spirit. You too be anointed of God. Because in the condition that the world is in tonight, the church must move in the power of the Holy Ghost. Good preaching is not going to be good enough. People need to experience the supernatural power of God. And it can only come by faith. It can only come by faith. It's just good preaching is not going to get it anymore. We've got to be anointed with the power of the Holy Ghost. And we've got to be full of and led by the Holy Ghost so that we can do ministry successfully. Say amen to that. Clap your hands once again and say, praise the Lord. Amen. God bless your heart. God bless you tonight. So good to have you come. So good for those of you that's online. Before you shut your uh, computer off or whatever, I'm going to ask you, everybody who's veering tonight, I'm going to ask you to plant a seed tonight. This is the first week in February. I want to ask you to plant a $20 seed tonight. A small amount of money, especially today. My wife and I went out to, to a place uh, to eat our last meal on Monday night. And she said, what did that cost? I said, let me tell you what it cost. It cost, she said, what? I said, yeah. You can't go to a good meal for $20 anymore. Not a good place. But I'm asking you to plant a $20 seed tonight. Or, or more if God so choose to do so. And the same for all of you tonight. If you're not paying your time tonight, plant a seed of $20 tonight. Plant a seed in the anointing of God. Because the more we plant financial seed in the anointing of God, the better off the whole church is going to be. Because we can give ourselves into the anointing. You can give yourself into miracles and signs and wonders from God. I've never seen a stingy person blessed of God. Never. Never. I've never seen a stingy church get anything done. The liberal soul shall be made fat. And the God of heaven realized that if he couldn't get your money, he can't get your heart. Wherever your money go, your heart's going to follow. You want to learn to love God more? Give him more and watch it work in your life. I love you. Do we have any first-time guests tonight? Anybody here for your first time, please stand. Any first-timers tonight? Well, praise the Lord, first-timer. Your name and who invited you? I know what church are you from? Okay, where's Christ at? Where's Jesus at? All right, all right. Well, you got a fine brother. We love him here. He's a good man. And if you if you have as good as, no, I'm just teasing you. I'm sure that you are better than him. Thank you for coming. Did you enjoy the class tonight? So does that mean you come back? Woo, thank you. All right, God bless you. So glad to have you, amen. That's wonderful. Invite your sisters and your brothers to come so that they can get exposure uh, to the word of God. Well, my time is out. I almost got out of time tonight, but I got this portion finished. We're going to start a new series on this coming Wednesday night. I'm praying about bringing in a teacher to teach us the book of Revelation. I would like to be taught the book of Revelation. Raise your hand. Okay. Well, I, that sells it. So I'm going to be able to take off several weeks. Save my voice. I'm going to bring somebody in all the way from San Diego. Amen. Praise God. On CD. <laughs> On DVD, excuse me. Amen. But I, I, I was praying about that. And um, uh, the man has been here before. You'll recognize him when you see him. He's been here before. And uh, I, I, he, he sent me some, some he, he specializes. You got to know your specialty, amen. But he specializes in um, end time events. 
Uh, and uh, I think that it would be a blessing to us to allow him to uh, minister the book of Revelation here in the church and tell your family members about it and you online, get ready for it as well. And uh, thank you, Jesus. I'm going to get some time off. Amen. Again. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's stand to our feet. Father, we thank you tonight for the teaching on the gifts of the Spirit. And we are determined that these gifts will manifest in our lives and ministry. I pray now, God, that as the people are viewing tonight, that you would touch and heal our bodies and our souls. And I pray that we would stay in faith and stay in hope and stay in love and that we'll be protected uh, by the blood of Jesus. Yes. I especially want to pray for uh, those who are part of the ministry that are here, Rosalind's husband. We bring him before you tonight. Touch and heal this body and anybody else who's suffering, who are associated with this ministry, may they be healed by faith in Jesus' name. And then, God, we're praying for the nation of Canada with the blockade of those 18 wheelers up there. We pray that you bring peace to Canada. And then we are praying, God, for this Super Bowl week here in Southern California. May our guests coming into the city be safe. May there be no outbreak of violence. And may everything go according to your divine plan. Now, bless the tithe and bless the offerings tonight. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. Please come and share. God bless your heart. Thank you for attending Loving Unity Christian Fellowship on today. We would like you to participate in this time of worship and giving. You can utilize text to give Ministry One app, or go to loveandunity.org. If you would like to text, please text the word GIVE to 310-507-1181. Or you can use our new church Ministry One app by going to your Play Store and ordering Ministry One app. It's free. Or go to loveandunity.org, L-O-V-E-A-N-D-U-N-I-T-Y dot org. And you can give there. Thank you so much again for joining us here at Love and Unity Christian Fellowship. You're going to have a good time.